Okay, thank you. Thank you everyone and welcome. Um, can I just remind all members and attendees to turn off the cameras and microphones until asked to speak? So this meeting will be webcast and a record retained on the Council website. For those at home viewing the webcast, I'd like to inform you that if you look above the video, you'll see a resources tab. Select this and a link to the agenda will appear in the right hand side. This will allow you to open the agenda in PDF form and allow the discussion and debate. So um, apologies, I've received uh, Councillor Julie McManus sent hers, Councillor Jean Robinson is deputising, um, Councillor Tom Usher sent his apologies, Councillor Tony Jones is deputising, and um, Jeff, can you just confirm that Councillor Hodson has sent his apologies? Yeah, and Councillor Cameron is deputising. Okay, thank you. Um, so Phil, Phil McCourt, could you take a roll call please of members in attendance? Thank you. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, and in the usual way, could I ask members to turn the camera on before they speak so it's uh, activated? Uh, Councillor Anderson. Good evening, present. Uh, Councillor Cameron. Good evening, present. Councillor Carubia. Yeah, good evening, everybody, present. Thank you. Councillor Cleary. Yes, uh, Pat Cleary, present. Thank you. Councillor Clemens. Good evening, Councillor Cameron's presence. Councillor Gilchrist. Yes, good evening, members present. Thank you. Councillor Green. Yes, good evening, present. Thank you. Councillor Gray. Councillor Gray, present. Councillor Jones. Good evening, Councillor Tony Jones, present. Councillor Leach. Councillor Leach present. Councillor McLaughlin. Councillor McLaughlin present. Councillor Nolan. Uh, good evening, Councillor Nolan present. Councillor Rennie. Councillor Lovely Rennie present. Councillor Robinson. Uh, good evening, Councillor Robinson present. Councillor Spriggs. Uh, Councillor Spriggs is struggling with her IT at the moment. She's saying that she can't hear anything. Um, so I, I don't know whether anyone can assist her with that. Yes, I'm, I'm sure someone can assist her and we can note when she rejoins the meeting, Chair. Uh, and Councillor Stewart. Councillor Stewart, present. Thank you, Members. Back to you, Chair. Okay. I don't have to say I'm present, do I? Because I'm okay thank you <clears throat> thanks everyone so hopefully we'll get councillor spriggs and it sorted as soon as possible for her. um okay agenda item three is members code of conduct declarations of interest so i'd just like to ask members to consider whether they've got any disclosable pecuniary pecuniary interests and or other relevant interests in connection with any of the items on the agenda tonight. If so, could they declare them and state the nature of their interest, please? I haven't seen any hands go up. I'll take that that no one has. Thank you. Moving on to the minutes, um, I'm just going to ask members to approve the accuracy of the minutes of the meetings held on the 18th and the 21st of December 2020. Do we have anyone who doesn't um, agree with the accuracy of the minutes? No. Okay, I'm going to move that we agree them. I've got a seconder. Seconder, Jeanette. Thank you. That brings you on to agenda item number five. This is a new uh, agenda item. Uh, we felt it was important to have an update from myself and the chief exec who I'll bring in after me, um, a verbal update on the late, latest COVID-19 situation in the borough. And the information has been provided by Julie, Heb Julie Webster, our director of public health. It's not a discussion item, it's just a, an update for, for everyone's information. So our latest information is that on Monday the 4th of January, we recorded our highest number of COVID-19 cases to date, with some 537 people testing positive in Wirral in a single day. And that was just 10 days after Christmas Day, um, the day where we were all told we could relax the guidance and mix with each other. To put the situation into context, on the 2nd of December, just 20 people tested positive for coronavirus in Wirral. So our latest numbers, the highest cases are in our working age population, which is why we've prioritised symptom-free testing for those people 
who had no alternative but to leave home each day and go to work. Supermarket workers, bus drivers, taxi drivers, school staff, etc. The average number of cases in the last seven days, that is up to the 15th of January 2021, is 361 cases per day. And that's higher than anything we saw in the autumn when the Liverpool City region was the first region placed into Tier 3. So that gives us some context. Uh, COVID cases are the highest in the working age population. That is the 20 to 59 year olds. Confirmed cases continue to be reported in care homes and in hospital settings, but approximately 51% of all cases reported in the previous seven days relate to residential households. Numbers are falling, but they're still incredibly high. We must all keep doing the right things to keep each other safe. And I know that close to all of our hearts, it's the fact that we've got colleagues currently with COVID. We've all got friends and colleagues and family members um, who have been who've been caught up in this dreadful pandemic. Um, so things aren't great. Um, slight decrease, but again, really worrying numbers. I'm going to bring Paul in now, and then I'm going to um, we'll move on to the next agenda item once Paul's uh, updated as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair, and thank you, members. First, can I thank really uh, everybody, residents, members, and members of uh, Wilbur Council staff for all the continued hard work they do in supporting the ongoing COVID crisis. Um, since Christmas, well, over over Christmas, the council was mobilised because, as you know, we went. Uh, there was a movement in tears between Christmas and New Year, um, and um, the resilient the Merseyside Resilience Forum uh, met in order to address those those challenges over the over the new period over the new year period. As you're all aware, um, <clears throat> shortly after uh, uh, the return to work on the 4th of January, uh, we moved into national lockdown. Um, and again, the council mobilised uh, the same services that it had mobilised in phase one lockdown uh, in terms of the, um, the COVID helpline and in terms of the business support grants. So all of those services that were there previously at the food distribution hub were mobilised really quickly. And in many ways, that was easy, easier to do uh, than in, in March when uh, we had to re-establish those services. The council uh, services are particularly stretched now, uh, and we have agreed with group leaders that we are focusing on three key priorities. First, obviously, is COVID-19 response. Second, uh, is uh, the budget challenges and third is over over the local plan. We've also initiated gold and silver command under strategic under, under strategic gold command, which is feeding into the Merseyside Resilience Forum. The challenges for us remain uh, in terms of trying to contain the spread of the virus and maintain the health and well-being and safety of our workforce, our members, uh, and our, our residents in the community. The partnership working between the NHS and the local authority remains extremely strong. Uh, we are working very hard at the moment to help Arrow Park uh, contain it, uh, maintain its capacity issues with the increased pressures on hospital admissions, and that is consuming a lot of my time uh, and a lot of uh, uh, officer time, including the director of adult and social care, in order to help address that. With uh, everybody knows <clears throat> the pressure that the NHS is on under and the acute trust pressure uh, and that the, the the start potentially in the plateauing of the spread of infection there is a lag between how that then translates into into hospital admissions um, resources within the local authority extremely stretched we are redeploying staff to those priority services and providing mutual aid and assistance wherever we can supporting also the nhs in its in its vaccination uh, roll out um, and we <coughs> will continue to do that uh, as that ramps up over the next few weeks. Thank you Chair. Thanks Paul. Just before we move on I just want to say and I'm sure I speak for all of the councillors in this meeting tonight uh, an enormous debt of gratitude to everyone who works for the council and the way that they've gone above and beyond since the beginning of this pandemic um, and there doesn't seem to be um, any sign of any let up at the minute which is why it's so important that we all do our bit and follow the guidance stay indoors wear your masks if you go out protect the nhs i can't stress that strongly enough so a big thank you to you and all of world council staff and um, thanks very much i'm going to move on to the next item now 
Okay, so this is agenda item six. We are public and member questions. Um, I'm not aware, well, there aren't any public questions. Um, we haven't received any. There are no statements that have been received. So we do have two petitions tonight, um, which I will ask, invite the um, petitioners in turn to speak to them. Now, in the constitution, a minute is allocated for, for um, people to present their petitions to us. I am mindful that um, that may not be enough time and I don't want to um, cut people short. So uh, whilst the, the minute is there, um, if you can do, if you can present your petition within the minute, that would be great. But I'm not going to cut anyone off uh, when the one minute is up, as it is a discretion of mine. So uh, I'd like to, um, is our first a petitioner here? Yes, Chair, I think Mr Stuart Barnes is on. Okay. Uh, this petition right. regarding the high view zone, yes. Chair. Hi, Stuart. Um, are you okay? Are you sort of the IT and everything? Yeah, you are. Good. All right. Well, as I just said, I'm not going to be, you know, cut, cut you off after a minute because it's, it's such an important issue. I don't think that would be fair to do. So, um, the minister guideline, but as I say, I'm not going to cut you off if you if you don't finish before then. So it's over to you now. Thanks a lot, Stuart. Okay, well, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I'm not going to speak for a minute because we actually have two young people um, from the High View Zone who are also um, on the call who are each going to just say 30 seconds each, if that is okay. Um, if they can be admitted, there is Molly McKee and Charlotte Pollard. Hi, I'm Molly, an ambassador for the Hive, and I am representing hundreds of members from the Wirral Youth Zoom. Over the past few weeks, a petition has circulated the internet about the Hive funds being cut. This has 2,500 signatures against the proposal and will be sent over to the council before Friday. The Hive has not only changed, however, saved my life through endless support and of the staff. I have I have, cha I have changed as a person and my confidence has went from zero to 100 in three years. I have had endless opportunities such as performing in the Royal Albert Hall. If the funds are cut, thousands of young people won't encounter the full life-changing experience the Hive has already given to thousands of members who already attend. Thank you. Thanks, Molly. Um, hi, my name is Charlotte and I'm a Hive Junior Council member. Um, I just quickly want to say thank you for all the support that you've given us um, up to now and I hope that you can keep um, supporting us. I, um, before the Hive was built, I used to stay at home and not really socialise to people much and then the Hive came and now I get so many opportunities and support um from like my mental needs um and my confidence has grown massively if you cut the funding to the hive it will damage um support that future young people and um, young people now um will get okay thank, thank you oh yeah and charlotte and Stuart. thank you thank you so much for that okay we have a second petition tonight as well. It's going to be presented by John White in that regards to potential closure of your river pools. Um, so is, is Mr. White up and running and able to talk to his petition? I think Hi, uh, you OK. Yes, thank you. Again, as I say, the, 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 um, the minute's not, I'm not going to you know, be sitting here with a watch. So if you'd like to start. Great, thanks very much. Um, thanks for the opportunity to speak this evening um, and talk about the, the, the petition. And we appreciate it's a difficult time for everyone at the council um, as well. So Wirral Metro is the, the Swim England affiliated performance programme for swimming on the Wirral. Um, a dedicated group of nine to 18 year old athletes train at Europa Pools 11 times a week before schools, evening times, um, with a proven success with Wirral athletes achieving regional, national, 
world and Olympic levels, um, as well as attaining UCAS points to attend university around the country and, and even scholarships in America. Europa is the only competition pool on the Wirral which is suitable for training at this level and hosting the Wirral Metro competitive meets and other galas, as well as schools using it, water polo, paddle boarding and many more activities. The Council Learn to Swim programme operates here um, for local kids and the feedback that we've had is that many users will be unable to get to other facilities and this means that lots of local kids may never, never learn to swim which we feel um, is an essential life skill. Europa as a centre is really well used by local families, uh, many community groups with um, regular use of the sensory room being so important to lots of families who, who face huge challenges. Um, thousands of local people will have literally no access to a facility of this kind if it's removed and the physical and mental health effects on our athletes and other young people we feel would be huge. We welcome the plans for a new centre but clearly this is going to take time and in the interim we, we feel we really need this facility as a local community. We have a petition with um, well over 4,000 uh, signatures which have submitted which shows the outcry of local people at this really drastic measure and we'd urge the council um, not to do this as we feel it'll take more from our young athletes, children and local people than COVID-19 already has. We totally appreciate the serious budget challenges to overcome but we would really ask the council to look at Europa in more detail and consider other ways of saving as we feel the real cost of this closure would be far too great for our young people. Thanks. Thanks very much for that, John. Cheers. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, so, yeah, I'd like to thank but, um, everyone that's spoken there to their petitions. Do, um, do any members here have any petitions they'd like to submit? No, okay. All right, thank you. You can move on to... The next agenda item um member questions 16 member questions so we have a question that's been submitted from councillor phil gilchrist phil would you like to read it out yes thank you chair the council has received a decision from the information commissioner about the disclosure of information relating to the hoylake golf resort and whilst the council is giving active consideration to the implications of this decision what weight is being given to the wider public interest in making the redacted information available? And should that not outweigh other issues in the light of the Commissioner's opinion? Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Phil. Um, so, yeah, we have had a response and you, you, we, we have sent you the response which you had sight of. Uh, I can read it out for the, for the benefit of members. So, uh, the information was made exempt from public access because it related to a person's financial or business affairs. The decision can only ever be made if certain conditions are met and the wider public interest test is central to those conditions. That is, that the information may only be made exempt if and for so long as the public interest in not disclosing the information outweighs the public interest in disclosing the information. The Council and the Information Commissioner came to two different views over the outcome of that test. The Economy, Regeneration and Development Committee will be asked on the 26th of January if it wishes to pursue di a, that difference of opinion and continue to put that question before the first tier tribunal. Bill, did you have a supplementary as well? Yes, thank you, Chair. I had, uh, thank you, courtesy, received the suggested uh, response from the Council, and I do wish to put a supplementary, which is as follows. Uh, would it not be better to publish the assumptions behind the scheme without further delay, as the ground has shifted under the scheme since the Secretary of State approved the Peel scheme for Halton Park in Bolton, and the Walker Cup is being held in California in 2025, and the Ryder Club is being held in Ireland in 2027, and the world has moved on. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thanks for that, Phil. Okay, so uh, a response to that, uh, our response is the companies involved under the agreement inform the Council that the information shared with the Council for due diligence purposes contains market-sensitive information requiring protection. 
These matters are subject to legal privilege and are an item of business to be presented at the ER and D committee next week. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Phil. You. Thank you. Just moving on to section A of the agenda for tonight, key and other decisions. So we've got agenda item seven, car parking charges, pages 11 to 38. And this is a referral from the Environment, Climate Emergency and Transport Committee. And I'd like to invite the chair of that committee, Councillor Liz Gray, to introduce the report, after which uh, members can ask questions and make comments. Thanks, Liz. Thanks, Chair. Um, just to quickly summarise what's happened so far. Um, the working group on parking charges met twice in November and looked in detail at a considerable amount of data for and against a return to parking charges. We discussed the options presented at length after reading through the information and listening to guest speakers from Wirral Chamber of Commerce and Wirral Environmental Network. We also look closely at what all our neighbouring local authorities are doing and some of those further afield. After much deliberation, we unanimously agreed that we should be reintroducing car parking charges as soon as possible. And five of the six councillors on the working group wish to see a return to the previous charging system, which was option four in the list of options provided, while one councillor wished to see the same um, reintroduction of parking charges minus that in shopping areas, which is option six. These findings were referred to the full committee, which was held on the 3rd of December. And they were voted on and carried. I would therefore suggest that however the findings may or may not have been presented to you as they found their way up from the working group through the full committee to PNR, as the person who was present at all the meetings, I can vouch for the fact that it is very much option four, which is recommended to PNR, which is a return to parking charges as they were before they were dropped. We simply cannot afford not to do this during a budget crisis that has been forced on us as, as we deal with COVID expenses um, following 10 years of austerity. If the revenue from car parking is not, uh, car parking charges is not reintroduced, then the money needed to repair all our car parks and the surrounding areas will need to come from funds that should be going on other services. Why, during a time when we may have to cut much-loved services elsewhere, would we look to offer this previously paid-for service for free? It doesn't fit with our climate emergency declaration to subsidise and encourage driving that might not be necessary. It doesn't help to deliver our health and wellbeing goals um, to encourage car use. And if the car parks provide a free service, it seems unfair on those without cars. It is a substantial amount of money, as you can see, to give away to car users who are getting a service in return. It's a service that is paid for almost everywhere else and a service that was paid for here before we dropped the charges last year. Um, it's about £1.8-ish million pounds, and much of this will be, uh, we'll need to find this from other service areas if we do not reintroduce car parking charges. So anybody who might have doubts about this and might uh, wish to argue against the reintroduction of parking charges really should say where they expect this money to come from and which services they wish us to axe in order to provide free car parking. I won't, I'm not going to keep you long and I'm not going to go through all the data because we, we did spend hours um, looking at this, but it's important to remember that the government has some useful statistics to help us see that scrapping car parking charges does not help local businesses and does not help local communities. So just briefly, according to the Department for Transport, local businesses have up to a 40% increase in footfall when we encourage walking and cycling and not driving. According to Sustrans, there's a 95 pence net benefit for individuals and society every single mile cycled instead of driven. And going to government figures again, an increased spend of up to 30% is found when people cycle or walk to the shops compared with driving. So to quote Transport for London, walking and cycling is good for the high street. People walking and cycling visit high streets more frequently and spend more money compared with people in cars. There is evidence that businesses also tend to overestimate how many of their customers use cars. 
One study found that local businesses assumed that 63% of their customers arrived by car, when in fact it was only 20%. So nobody wants to take away people's cars, but it's important to myth bust about access issues and equality too. Three out of four older people, that is aged 65 and over, say they can cycle, and 76% of disabled people say they can cycle. So rates for walking are even higher. Reintroduction of car parking charges is fair and necessary, and it's far from an attack on the rights of any group of people. It is much more of an attack to leave this council in a situation in which we need to raid the funds of all our other services in order to offer free parking where it was not on offer before. Car parking causes wear and tear which needs to be paid for. Not charging for parking is effectively a subsidy of car owners that is paid for by all, including, perhaps most shamefully, those who cannot afford cars. I would therefore urge everyone to accept the reintroduction of car parking charges as outlined in option four. Thank you. Okay, thanks for that, Liz. Um, just to put some context in, into this, uh, this as well, um, what happened was car parking charges were, as everyone is aware, suspended um, last year. Um, the decision to reinstate them was called in at a committee um, last October, I think. And then the decision of the calling was that we would keep them suspended until P&R could then um, pick the matter up. And it's been it's been referred to your committee, Liz. And I just want to thank you and the members of that committee for all the hard work you've done on this um, and the information you put to us today. Really thorough. So thank you for that. Um, I'm going to invite members now to ask questions and make comments. I can see that Paul Stewart, you've got your hand up. Thank you. Chair, I think I had my hand up right from the beginning. Ah, uh, sorry, Moira. Yeah, I can see. Yeah, Moira, thanks. Thanks, and thanks, Chair. And thank you uh, to the Working Party for the piece of work that they've done, and also for the Chair um, of the Committee for bringing uh, clarity that wasn't actually immediately obvious uh, as to the conclusions of the Working Party. It wasn't immediately obvious um, from the report. Um, I will be supporting the, um, the findings of the Working Party. I very firmly believe that if you give a working party a piece of work to do, um, that you should listen to them because they've taken the uh, time to look at the data in more depth than, than we have done. And so I will be supporting it. But um, could, you, could the chair just answer a question on when it came to the full committee, what was the split on the committee? Was it unanimously agreed at committee or what was the number? Um, it was carried. It was uh, th there was actually a bit of confusion because there was a change of opinion with one of the members of the working group. So Councillor Cox voted uh, as part of the working group. He voted for the reintroduction of parking charges and then changed his mind at full committee. And so I think that it was carried seven four. Thank you very much for that. And I might I suggest that in future, at any other committee, not particularly relating to yours, but any other committee that undertakes a piece of work like this, that if there is a dissent. In the, in the final decision of the working party, that perhaps those people who have dissented might consider doing a, a minority report so that we can have a look at the arguments that they've put forward and balance them up against the uh, findings of the committee. But thanks very much, and I'll be supporting the recommendation of the committee. Thank you. Thanks for that, Moira. Um, I'm just going to go in the, the order I can see on the screen now. So, um, Tom Anson, have you got your hand up? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Chair, and uh, thanks, Councillor Gray, and the working party for the amount, um, for the amount of work they've done. I, I understand um, it was long um, and a lot of options are considered. My concern about this just at the moment is we're, we're in our third national lockdown now. Circumstances have changed again, and we don't know when we're going to be uh, reopening, sadly. And um, that does pose a problem. You know, we're encouraging people to, to stay off public transport in a way. Um, you know, so they, they've only got their options of the cars. But again, the country parks are, are you well used, um, you know, and it's about prevent, you know, discouraging access in there. So, so for me, I just don't feel that reintroducing them at this time um, would be the right thing to do. I think we should uh, reconsider this um, in June. And one of the questions for me would be um, what 
what money what money the council had from government um for you know lost income and, and charges and has that been continued thank you chair i'll hand over to liz for that because i'm sure you got the information to hand but i i know for a fact that we've covered this ground several times with regards to reimbursement from central government councillor anderson and and i think you know that we don't get fully reimbursed but liz uh, i'll defer to your expertise on this one Thanks, Chair. Um, thanks, Councillor Anderson. It, it is a shame that we're not going to be fully reimbursed. We, we get, I think it's 75 pence back for every pound that we spend in our COVID response. Um, so there will be a, a significant loss um, because of, of the um, absence of parking charges. Um, the the amount that the money that we get back from the government only applies to certain months as well. So I think it's between uh, it's possibly between January and March this year, um, and it's only April to July last year. So all those other months we've lost in its entirety um, that the money that we were not charging in parking. So it, it, there's a considerable amount of money being lost here. Perhaps we could ask an officer to step in with that yes. information. Yeah, Thank to clarify you. that would be great. Thanks. Thank you. So I believe we have Simon here tonight. Are you able to provide that I information, can, please? I can help, Chair. Yeah, that that that's correct as far as I understand it. What um, uh, Chair of Environment Committee has, has said there in terms of the uh, the, um, the the income and the uh, potential relief from government. So income between um, July um, when shops reopened and. Um, January the 4th when the uh, the third lockdown was imposed is not eligible for relief so we, we, we have lost that income opportunity and depending on the um, clearly on the uh, on the patronage of car parks which we don't have data on that could have been anything from 350,000 up to about 600,000 of income thanks chair I'm going to take the, um, in the order in front of me now, I've got Paul Stewart, then Chris Carubia, and then Phil Gilchrist. Thank you. Paul, you're next. Um, thank you very much, Jen. Um, just to sort of come back on the officer's response there, that um, should, I, I appreciate that we're not going to be able to predict how many people would abuse the car parks. Um, during, so, sorry, since, uh, um, June, July, but surely we must have a um, a tighter figure on how much the council um, has lost, even if it's a comparison to the year before, the year before that, um, of how much we have lost since um, the car park and charges should have been reinstated because the government um, will not provide any relief on that and I just wonder if officers could also give us um, a, a cost given that we're only going to get 75% of um, the charges back between April and June how much as, is a loss of that where we're not where the government are going to fail to give us um, that, that money back and can you confirm if there is a are the government going to give us money back for any of the time but that we're currently in um, lockdown? Um, the other question that I've got, again, probably more suitable for the officers, is that in, in the report it says that um, there's a 300 to £350,000 um, income um, with regards to PCNs. Um, and I, I just wanted to know, is that correct and how... If that is the case, if it's PCN, so that's parking tickets. So how, obviously, that can fluctuate. How do you know that we're going to actually make that kind of money um, from PCNs? Because obviously, that's predicting that people are not going to be um, putting the appropriate uh, tickets on or parking in uh, places where they haven't got a pass to do so. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Simon, are you able to come in on that one? Yes, thanks, Chair. Um, I'll, I'll answer the last question first, if that's all right, Councillor Stewart. So in terms of penalty charge notices, um, the income that we've received in penalty charge notices and, we're, and that we're predicting to receive in penalty charge notices of the order of 300 to 350,000 for the year is based upon uh, penalty charge notices issued on, on people who have uh, breached traffic regulation orders, so parking on yellow lines effectively. So uh, normally we would receive about 600,000 a year in income from penalty charge notices. 
uh, but some of that is also associated with uh, obviously parking in our car parks and on street parking locations and not buying a ticket and such like so that income is down but it's it, there is some income coming in from penalty charge notices on yellow lines in terms of the um what data we've used and what figure we've used to predict what we might have brought in um, in income, then we've used 40% as, a, as, a, as an estimate of, um, of usage of our car parks and that's based on um, questions with neighbouring authorities and anecdotal evidence in terms of numbers of people using car parks. But I think it's fair to say in certainly in the summer months in country park locations there, there was much more than 40 percent use but i think generally that's what we've used in the figures so the the, the one i mentioned earlier of 355,000 uh potential income loss between um august and or july and uh, and and january when we we can't claim government relief is based on that uh, and based on the fact that we really receive in a normal year approximately thirty-five and a half thousand pounds a week of income purely from parking charges, so that multiplied by forty percent um, and multiplied by the number of weeks generates that figure. Um, I, I'm afraid colleagues in uh, in resources will be better able to answer what actual relief we've received um, for income lost between um, April and uh, July. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you for that. Do we have is, is uh, anyone from finance here able to answer that, or is anyone here? Um, thanks, Chair. I can comment on that if you like. You. Um, I, the answer is I don't know. Uh, to be honest, we don't. Um, we have got a return that we fill out in terms of uh, individual items of um, income that we've claimed back, and we just receive one lump sum. So just to clarify what we're allowed to, to reclaim, we have to discount the first 5% ourselves and then we can claim 75% of the balance. So it's 75% of 95%. But I'd, um, I don't have those figures with me, uh, unfortunately, this evening, but we can provide those after the meeting. Thank you. So the, the principle broadly, though, is that for every 95, 95 pence that's lost through suspension of parking charges were only reimbursed 75 pence out of that 95 pence that's right chair so, yeah so i think that that's certainly something that's good to clear up uh, in this meeting um rather than you know people assume or think that we get full, fully reimbursed okay thank you i've got chris caribia next thanks thanks chris uh thanks chair um Thanks for the uh, really comprehensive study that was done on this car parking charges. Um, it's really uh, got a lot of information in there and it's very thorough. Um, my concern is that not that we shouldn't do car parking charges. My question would be, um, we're now in a third lockdown, which we didn't expect to have when this piece of work was done. Uh, and I'm wondering whether that should have changed the outcome somewhat. I'm a bit concerned about charging in the country parks. Again, we... we Charging at, at shopping areas and, and, and long stay car parks is one thing, but in this lockdown situation, I wonder how much benefit it's going to be because the only things that are supposedly open now are supermarkets, which are free parking anyway, uh, and not not our car parks. But I'm really concerned that that, that we're going to limit people's ability to go to car uh, to country parks. And I know people will say, get a bus, walk take a cycle whatever but living in eastern and an eastern country park is the biggest cul-de-sac in Wirral it's not easy to walk all the way down to eastern country park from eastern village never mind anywhere else so I, i'm really concerned about putting the car parking charges back into the country parks at this stage due to this this third lockdown when we really should be encouraging people to get out and get exercise and if that means they have to travel by vehicle to get to a country park because it's too far to walk or cycle, then so be it as far as I'm concerned. So I would like to propose that we would go with the charges and an option four minus putting it into country parks, if that's okay, Chair. So that's an amendment on the table. Um, yes, please. I've got a few, I've got, a, to be honest, I'd be quite interested to hear a response to some of those concerns you've raised for, because I'd be interested as well to know, has the use of our country parks rapidly altered since we've had charging for them and then we haven't because 
But of course, it's the you, litmus I can test. I give you my it? response on that from Eastern's oh, point of view. Yeah, I, I'll, um, I'll defer to the, the officers sure. who've got the information to hand, if that's all right. And, a, and also clarification on how much it is to park. And I, I, I think, is it 50 pence for an hour? Um, well, I'd like someone to respond to that anyway, if that's okay. Thanks, Chris. Chair, in terms of uh, in terms of country park um, charges, um, it's it's fifty pence for the first hour. It's one pound for the first um, up to two hours, and it's two pounds over two hours. Um, in terms of the usage of country parks, obviously, as with with all our our car parks, we we don't have the figures unfortunately for the last uh, almost twelve months now since the first lockdown because uh, we obviously haven't been collecting tickets, so we don't know the usage. Um, the figures in terms of normal a normal year is that we receive about four thousand pound a week in income from from country parks. I think anecdotally, um, country park use went up. And car parking in country parks went up very, very significantly in the summer to the extent that we had did have some traffic congestion problems around certain country parks. I hope that helps. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Um, just noting that um, we, we that would be a proposal from yourself, Chris, and we'd need a seconder on that. Do we have a seconder? Yes, thanks. If that's Thank I'll, I'll put a wording in the chat if that and you, you may wish to call me next if I'm in order. Yes, you are next anyway. Thanks, Phil. Well, thank you. Uh, first of all, I'm very grateful that Councillor Gray's working party went through the detail of this because they did in fact have twenty different options before them, depending on what might happen about parking in the future. The reason why the council in the very early days of the uh, situation was the council suspended charge because it was clearly concerned about the the to support people who are working in the health and other key services now we've heard earlier about the issue of people wishing or not to use public transport and given the distances they have to sit on the public transport vehicles then it is can be very difficult for people to plan to go there shopping on the buses as they're currently operating. So there's a bit of a, something of a disincentive there. Now, if we go back some time, I'm sorry about this, the original purpose of having car parking charges in shopping centres was to encourage a turnover of spaces. Yeah, I go back so far that in some areas there was disagreements in the side streets that were not covered by uh, any traffic regulation orders. There was, uh, you know, parking was shifted in some cases into side streets. Now, as I see it, it's important to give people the opportunity to get to local shopping centres that are charged for. Uh, but I should, if I'm right, the places that aren't owned by us, like the Grange and the Pyramids and the Cherry Tree Centre and Lisgard. They're privately owned and still doing their own charging regime. And for those of us who live down this end of the borough chair, uh, we only have to look over the border into Elsie Port. And whilst in the smaller centres like Nest and a little Sutton, there aren't charges, and away from the town centre in the suburbs around the town centre, there aren't charges, Elsie Port through Cheshire West is charging for the car parking in its town centre in the major shopping centres. So councils around our uh, community, around Merseyside and far beyond, are actually surveyed by our officers. And I think with the exception of Wigan, unless I'm wrong, um, most of the councils had actually introduced or reintroduced car parking charges, even if they suspended them in the first place. Now, that's why I can understand and accept car parking charges in this key locations especially given the financial issues that we have uh, we've heard that we didn't get help right through from july to september and when we have had help it, it's been limited so i think there's a financial imperative but from my point of view and what councillor carabiris said there's also a public a health imperative uh, as Councillor Carabier pointed out, many people do use Eastern Country Park, but we have four country parks, you know, First Eastern or Wirral, Royden. And so we've got the four parks, and including Arrow Park, where there have been some charges introduced, where we have seen some displacement. But I think as a council, we need to encourage those people to take exercise for both their physical and mental health. So I'm happy to second an amendment on this 
pure issue of the country parks. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Phil. Um, I can see in the chat box that Councillor Anderson wants to um, propose an amendment to an amendment to Councillor Karubia and Gilchrist's proposal. Um, do you want to um, tell us what that is, Tom, before I bring in the other speakers on the list, please? Sure, thank you, Chair. It wasn't an amendment as such to Councillor uh, Karubia's proposal. It was to, to basically move that um, as we're now in our third national lockdown, reintroducing car parking charges at, the, at this moment would have a detrimental impact on small businesses and discourage people using our country parks. Um, so therefore, uh, committee resolves to continue the suspension of council car parking charges um, to be reviewed in April. Uh, and there's nothing in that about where the money would come from, Councillor Anderson. Well, we can have a separate conversation over that chair at, at budget when we do our P&R budget. Okay, so if you've got a set of good, do you have a seconder for that? I've had my hand up for a while. Jeff. Yeah, I'm asking for a seconder for this though, Jeff, at the moment. Jeff, I'm happy to right. second it. Yeah. Okay, Jeff. Phil, would you like to come in and give us some advice here? Certainly, Chair. Um, as Councillor Anderson has just explained, that that's actually an alternative proposal. Um, so what you would need to do is to uh, clear Councillor Kouboubias and Gilchrist's proposal uh, off the table by voting against it. And if that's voted down, then Councillor Anderson's uh, proposal can be uh, put up in its place. Uh, but in effect, it's voting against. So uh, it's a new proposal. Can I can I check? Well, I suppose I think we're all making the assumption that someone had proposed the um, the recommendation, which I think was what uh, Councillor Gray did. So she proposed okay. item A, and therefore there was an amendment to that by Councillor Carubia, and there was a further amendment to it by um, by Tom. So uh, that was my understanding. Right, so okay, firstly, could you wait till I bring you in, please, Jeff? Um, and secondly, I think Phil McCourt, could you just clarify again what, what, how we're going to proceed on this? Um, yes, certainly, uh, Chair. Councillor Gray introduced the item. Uh, she did make the proposal. She certainly um, articulated what she felt the, the committee uh, had recommended to you, uh, but it certainly wasn't seconded. So, um, uh, as explained when Councillor Kubia put his proposal forward, that was the first proposal uh, that's been made for voting upon. So that's what's on the table as it's now been seconded. Um, okay. Anything uh, to that, if there's an alteration to that and amendment, then that will get voted on first. Uh, but as explained, uh, Councillor Anderson's proposal is, uh, uh, negates uh, the, uh, Councillor Kubia. So, in effect, it's... Uh, an articulation of voting against it. So uh, the pr process would be voting on Councillor Krubius and Gilchrist's uh, motion. If that's voted down, uh, then an alternative proposal could be put up. So fair, you'll take the Lib Dem one first then. Okay. I think I'm clear on that one. Thank you. Um, there's just a few hands up first. So bear in mind now we've got um, a few votes to... Um, continue on to. Jeff, was that what you wanted to say when you just said it, or is there anything further you'd like to ask your hands up next? No, no, I've, I've had my hand up for a while to deal with these things. And, um, so, if it's my turn, is it, Chair? This is. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, because I think what uh, Mr McCourt has just said has, has changed my understanding of what was going on, but I'm sure <clears throat> that can be uh, changed and adjusted as we carry on so yeah, a couple of things as the discussion went on um, I think in the context of what we've talked about um, lockdown I think when the working group were looking at this I think we heard from your introduction chair that the situation was very different in terms of levels of uh, infection and uh, what was happening uh, within Wirral and we did subsequently see um, see infection and COVID really uh, take off again post that uh, the working group doing the work. And I do, as others have done, um, thank those people who've been involved in the um, 
in that, uh, putting that work together. However, I, I do think, as a number of people have said, uh, that we are in a, a different um, set of circumstances now, and we need to review it as we stand now. And, uh, you know, and again, I, I commend um, the leaders who took the decision to suspend the um, uh, the charges when when they did um, early on in the pandemic. Um, and we as a whole committee who took the view to um, to maintain that um, subsequently. And I think that's, you know, so any resources that we've lost from that, um, that particular period is down to us all because we all took that decision. But I do think we should be aware that the public health guidance has been uh, reiterated given the nature of the pandemic is to stay away from, stay off public transport. And, and if you can, use your car. That was the advice. One of the reasons being we needed to use, we need to retain public transport for the use of, of key workers without it being, um, being crowded. And, and again, I mean, people have talked uh, certainly about customers and about customers visiting, uh, you know, uh, supermarkets. But I would remind people that there are small businesses also that are providing essential um, essential products that people would go and buy. So you don't, you don't just have to go to a supermarket to get your essential goods. And there's another group as well as customers uh, to take account of here, and that's the workers. So the people working in those shops who still have to go, the shop workers, which we have rightly, I think, uh, commended for the uh, for the fantastic job they've done in keeping, keeping groceries and keeping us all um, supplied. And I would just point out that we do need to think in all of this about the about those people who do still go to work, who might still be relying on um, council car parks, that if we then start charging for those council car parks, they will be significantly out of pocket whilst they actually still go and make sure we can get our groceries and continue. And again, I had in, in this note about country parks and the country park usage. The message is very clear. The public health message is very clear that we're encouraging people to go out and um, and take exercise. And a bit like um, a, a bit like Chris has pointed out, the idea of um, a lot of people walking down to Thurston Country Park, for instance, to join Thurston Country Park, that's quite a quite a hike from part of uh, from part of Wirral. What might just might not be accessible to people who are more frail or elderly, actually, in order to access those facilities. And I think we should be doing all we can to encourage people to utilise and to take exercise. So I think, given it's this uh, this latest wave and the nature of this latest latest wave, I think it would be wrong to reintroduce car parking. And on the issue of resources, certainly my understanding. Uh, looking at the items that are coming up, I understand the government are uh, are giving us some uh, uh, lost income, and we're putting those things forward. Uh, we're putting that forward as a claim to them. But also, I understand that the financial position has been uh, suggested is going to be better because the government is allowing uh, allowing us to claim for longer than was initially anticipated, and certainly when the working group looked at this particular issue. So um, I think it's like three million is the overall benefit we think that the uh, council will make because of that change. Uh, so for all those reasons, Chair, I I would support, uh, I will support an amendment to, uh, to Councillor Karubia's amendment, which is to say that along with uh, country parks, um, Etc. Uh, that we would want to make sure that we protect uh, and that we don't reintroduce car parking charges in um, in the um, in shopping centres, etc. So that's certainly where Thank I'd be you. coming from. Thank you, Thank Chair. Thank you uh, for bringing that speaker in. And I'm, I'm not. Um, I don't know that we've got any data around how many where of our work workers use council car parks. But what I could say is that um, many of our work, shop workers are part-time workers who are also reliant upon the likes of Universal Credit, which 
we've seen uh, slashed this week. So, you know, let's be and more just holistic. Just a fax point, Chair. Can we, haven't can seen we just it be more holistic when we talk about... Actually, well, if, you're Jeff, gonna, if you're going to talk fast, actually, Jeff, I'm facts. speaking. Yeah, but you're not, you're not telling the truth. I'm speaking, okay? And I'm entitled to have an opinion just as much as you are, and you've just very eloquently put yours out there, Jeff. So I was also in the middle of putting mine out there, which is a broader point about our workforce and about how we can assist them. Uh, and I think I'm entitled to say that. Pat Cleary, I'm going to bring you in next. Yeah, thanks very much, Chair. Um, well, firstly, I'd also like to thank the committee for the work they've done. It's very comprehensive and very interesting reading. And uh, Councillor Gray made many salient and worthy points in her introduction. Uh, I'd like to uh, confirm my support for option four uh, on the uh, on the papers. Um, Councillor Green gave the impression that the committee unanimously uh, approved the previous position. Uh, that is not the case. The Green Party has always made the case uh, for car parking charges to cover the costs uh, to the council of providing those car parks, not just the financial cost, but the opportunity cost, which is very significant in the amount of car parks that we provide. All of that land can be used uh, for other purposes. Um, so charging for car parking is fiscally responsible. It is clearly environmentally responsible. And I noticed that the speakers who are arguing against uh, uh, the options that were presented on the paperwork, uh, none of them have actually mentioned the environmental uh, benefits of charging for car parking. Uh, and it's also socially responsible, uh, as you yourself, Chair, have pointed out, and as Councillor Gray pointed out, uh, it is socially regressive uh, not to charge for car parking. And it penalises those people who have to fund uh, those car parks uh, through their council tax, who, who may not, who may not themselves own a vehicle. So I've always argued from the beginning that we should be charging for car parking. Uh, and I wonder how the, um, the people who presented the petitions earlier in the meeting, the young people in support of our youth services uh, and the, the support for our leisure centre at, at Europa Pools, I wonder how they feel about all the income we have foregone over the last eight or nine months uh, that could have addressed some of the drastic uh, budget cuts that we are currently consulting uh, with the public on. Uh, I'd also make the point that our car parking charges are very modest. So even if they're reinstated, it is still cheaper for the vast majority of people uh, to drive to local shops if they have the capability of doing so, rather than to take public transport. So even reinstating those uh, charges, uh, it is still cheaper to drive to our shopping centres, country parks, etc., than to take uh, public transport. Uh, and my final point uh, relates to the, the country parks uh, in particular. Uh, and I would just say that, again, those councillors who are moving alternatives to what we have in front of us, none of them have said where we're going to make up the financial costs if we continue not to charge uh, for car parking services. And, and to me, given the budget situation of the council and all of the drastic cuts uh, that we are consulting on, that is just fiscally irresponsible. Uh, and they really should be outlining how they're going to make up the difference uh, if we don't uh, follow option four on the, on the papers. Uh, but in terms of the country parks, I would just make the point that to claim that it is um, a public health benefit is really stretching the point because we are blessed in Wirral uh, with our public parks, our access to open countryside, our access to uh, the coastline. Uh, we have ample opportunities uh, for exercise. Nobody has to go to a public uh, country park uh, for exercise. Uh, and charging for car parking in our country parks is the right thing to do because all of that car parking space could be used for the protection of nature, etc., and for the enjoyment of those country parks that they're there for in the first place. So their discouragement for people to use uh, their cars, that is a clear public health benefit. Uh, and I, I would appreciate a comment from Councillor Gray because she made many worthy points. But the one thing she didn't refer to uh, was the air quality crisis that we face uh, in, a, in our borough. Uh, at the Transport Committee recently, we were informed that 800 people across the, the city region die every year because of the poor quality of our air. So people are dying in our city region uh, because of poor air quality. And in Wirral, the figure is approximately 140 people every year. And we have an awful public health crisis at the moment. But we shouldn't forget that every year, something in the region of 140 of our residents are dying because of the, the, the dirty air that they breathe. 
So would Councillor Gray just give me some uh, idea about to what extent the working group considered that specific aspect uh, uh, during their deliberations? Thank you, Chair. Thank you for that, Pat. Uh, Councillor Gray, do you want to come in quickly? Yes, um, Pat's asked you a direct question there. Yes, to what extent do we consider air quality? It was discussed um, and, and it was certainly something that the Labour group considered when we made our um, our, our discussions. Um, and I, I, I suspect that some, it was something that um, each of the different groups thought about because it was clearly... Um, something that was on the on the on the agenda we did discuss air quality at some point um and i, I it was factor in my decision making i can't answer for everybody else who was on the um, working group who was in the committee but it was certainly on my mind thanks okay thank you for that liz i've got a few more hands up and i think once everyone's had the chance to speak once we're going to um turn to um we proceed with the uh, proposal stroke amendments and voting. So I'm going to bring people in who haven't spoke. Uh, Yvonne, your hands up. Thanks. Thanks. Um, it's just very brief. Um, people are talking about country parks for exercise. And absolutely right. We are encouraging people to exercise. We're not encouraging them to drive to exercise. In fact, the public health advice is very clear. You should exercise close to home. So I, that argument just doesn't stand up. Um, it certainly doesn't stand up for the public health argument. Thanks, Chair. OK, thank you. I think everyone's had a chance to speak on this. Now, there are a few um, options for us to vote on. So I, I do see that Chris and Phil's hands are up, but um, if it's OK, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on to the vote now. But Phil, I'm going to bring you in first because it's a bit complicated, and I think I'm going to need you to clarify for myself and members. Thanks. Thank you, Chair. Um, if I explain where we are, and then I, I have a question, uh, if I may. Uh, so the recommendation was put across by Councillor Gray. Uh, a proposal was made uh, for voting upon uh, from Councillor Kruby and Gilchrist, uh, which you've heard, which is to introduce uh, car parking uh, apart from uh, country parks. Uh, Councillor Green has moved an amendment to that uh, to add the words and uh, shopping car parks, etc. Uh, that needs a second, but I'd also just like to ask Councillor Green uh, the word etc. Uh, can the committee presume that the etc. means the reasoning for that uh, as uh, articulated by Councillor Anderson, or did he mean to include other kinds of car parks? If that could just be clarified, please. Uh, that was that reflected the comments that have been made by Councillor Anderson. And can I just, can I ask you a question back, uh, of course. Phil, while you're on? Um, there is no proposal to agree um, recommendation A of the report yet, is there? So if if it goes, if, if the voting goes along as you've suggested, then um, th fundamentally we'd be in the same boat unless somebody is prepared to move recommendation A and have it seconded. Uh, is Councillor Kubia uh, happy to add that to his overall proposal or will that be the subject of a... So, uh, as far, I, I'm, I'm a bit confused now Phil, I, I, am, I was uh, assuming that Councillor Gray's proposal was gone through that we vote for option four and my amendment was to go for option four with the omission of the country parks only yes that's yeah. that's my um, understanding you forgive me if i just ask for clarification because of course the recommendation in a talks about introducing parking charges immediately whereas the working party were talking about a uh, date at the end of march so i would be grateful to remove any confusion there might be about immediately as opposed to at the end of march Chair, can I come back in on that, please? The, the work, thank you. The working group, um, we're working with the deadline of the end of the year, so the end of January. That was our that was our deadline because at that point, PNR had agreed to suspend charges until the end of the year. And so that's that. We were when we said we wanted to reintroduce parking charges, it was as soon as possible after that deadline. So it's any time from 
from the beginning of 2021. So Liz, are you happy to um, propose that? Are you happy to move that? Or yes. Phil, so, are you going to correct me on this now? Yeah, so, so Chair, as I understand it, as I say, that those recommendations were put forward by Councillor Gray. Councillor Carubia uh, stated that uh, he wished the car parking charges to be introduced, presumably along the lines of A, um, at locations and immediately with the exception of uh, country parks, which uh, Councillor Gilchrist seconded. So that's the proposal that's on the table. Uh, Councillor Green has moved an amendment to that, which would be voted on first. You won't uh, guess. To add won't the words and shopping uh, car parks, but that's yet to find a, a seconder. Yeah, but Tom, Tom yeah. Anderson moved yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, well, Bill, could, could I also ask for clarification on Phil Gilchrist and Chris Carubia's um, proposal? Because there doesn't seem to be any date there. Now, obviously, there's budgetary implications, isn't there, for 2021 and 21 22, depending on dates. So um, I think we have to have some kind of, for me, we, you know, this we, the very loosely, but actually, we need to be a little bit more forensic, I think, than just this. If, so, if like, right, yeah. um, Councillor Carubia, can you, yeah. you come in? If I may, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm quite happy. My my amendment is to Councillor Gray's uh, motion, and it's just it, it follows her motion completely, with the um, except for having the omission of the country parks. Everything else stays the same. So where she has immediately, that's 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 okay. I'm not bothered. I, it's, I just don't want to be charging in the country parks. Yeah. But until safe? you haven't got it, we haven't got a date, an end date, have we attached for that? Are you saying? For, for the foreseeable, for... Uh, I'm Bill, saying that the only amendment is that she takes out, or, or that we take out charging in the country parks, the rest is as is. And can, and for clarity, um, I, just a clarity... There's a, few, I, there's a few other hands up here. I just need... Let's try and get some more hudder back. Phil, you wanted to come back in, and then Tom's got his hand up. Yes, Chair. Um, if I can take you through this... Councillor Gray made a recommendation. Uh, she didn't move it because there was no seconder. Councillor Carubia picked up that recommendation, uh, which is introducing car parking charges immediately at all locations, but changed it to say, except at country parks. That was seconded by Councillor Gilchrist for the reasons he's put in the, uh, in the type. Uh, and that's the proposal that's on the table for voting upon. Council yeah, I'm just Green. not clear as to when we would. Where, is there a proposal to reinstate country parks at any time? Because there's budgetary implications with that. Uh, so, Councillor Kubia might want to uh, elucidate further, uh, but as he's put it, it would need to come back to you. Uh, it will be dealt with again in the next year's budget as to what happens to those country parks. So okay, sorry. So, Alter, uh, his proposal to put an, an end date on when country parks charging comes back in, whether that's the end of this financial year or he sees it going forward beyond that. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, Rubia, do you wish to uh, alter your uh, proposal uh, so that... Uh, I'm open to yeah. suggestions there, Phil, um, on because my... my the initial response was to not charge in country parks because we're in this third lockdown position. Now, I don't know when that lockdown is going to be finished, whether we could reintroduce. I don't want them reintroduced full stop, but I understand the need. So when the date would be available for us to do that, I don't know when the lockdown is going to end or when it would be the most appropriate time to consider it. Chair. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so if I may, Chair, just to say then, uh, if left as it is, that would roll forward and would require um, a new report to come to you to reintroduce charging. Okay. Uh, I'm going to bring Cher in at this point, if that's okay, as our finance person. Cher, could you just... Cher, I've had my hand up for quite a while, and I think I'm, my uh, comment might be helpful. Okay. okay. Well, um, I'm just, I'll just bring Cher in quickly, and then I'll come to you, Moira. I do appreciate you have your hand up for a while. Okay. Cher, do you have any anything quickly to with regards to Chris Carubia's uh, proposal around the budgetary implications? 
Um, thank you, Chair. Yeah, just to, just to pick that up and um, your comment about the dates as well. I think um, I think if if the um, recommendation was to go past the 31st of March, it wouldn't be uh, an alternative proposal to the budget, so it would need to be submitted as part of that from uh, past the 1st of April. Um, if Councillor Kruby's um, date is uh, to uh, postpone, or the amendment is to postpone country parks until the end of lockdown, then that will be determined by the date for the government. Um, and the same would... apply for same apply for the Conservative amendment then? It is... Yes, um, Chair. So, so any um, any uh, dis any change to the budget would ha is reserved to full council. My understanding. So, any change for from the first of April in terms of um, car parking would need to come as part of the budget report and an alternative to the budget, uh, the draft budget consultation that's been put forward so far. Okay, thank you. I'm going to bring Moira in now. I am hoping it's going to be helpful. Well, it Thanks, is, Moira. I, I think it's it is helpful. Um, I have to say that the um, amendment that's been moved by the Liberal Democrats didn't have an end date in, and that in itself should be something which influences people to vote. I'm just looking at Phil's, um, where he says, I wish to second it, and he's put a formal word in, it doesn't include an end date. That in itself is something which members should be considering when they vote as to whether or not this is the right way to proceed. And the same goes for um, for for uh, Jeff's amendment, there is no end date in that. You can't really go back and say, Jeff, stick one in now, because you've moved it already. Um, can I just be clear about this? Can I just be clear? Um, sorry, Jeff, Jeff, if you... I don't Jeff, mind you speaking, Jeff. You just need to come through the chair. Well, and I'm asking to. everyone to do that. I know we're all vexed or um, excised by this debate tonight, but we have to have some order in this meeting. So, yes, Jeff, you can come back, because Moira mentioned you. Thank you. Well, Moira and Phil have mentioned me several times uh, because what I was saying was in relation to, as I understood it, a proposal by Councillor Gray that was sec that was amended by Councillor Carubia, which was then a view was taken about what Tom's resolution was, which I had seconded. Now, as this has developed, it now seems as though it's Councillor Carubia's proposal, which our uh, which the proposal moved by Tom. Uh, seeks to amend because I think from what I can tell Councillor Karubia's amendment has been changed out of all recognition so that so as Phil has pointed out whatever I said hasn't been seconded by anyone and that's fine because I'm clear what I'm doing with regards to the resolutions that are on the table which was Councillor Karubia's which was A plus his amendment and there is a, an amendment to that, which was moved by Tom. Okay. And I'm clear about That's that. Fine. Thank you. Right. I think we should proceed to the votes now. Everyone spoken who wanted to speak. Um, I know there are several hands up, but unless there's anything that's going to substantially change the proposals and or amendments we've got in front of us, I think we should proceed to the vote. Chair, can I just reiterate what my actual amendment was? Yes, was that would be by, helpful. By, by Jeff. It was in the current circumstances, I've just scribbled notes, so it's, um, I haven't, can't put it in the chat, but it's in, in light of the third national lockdown, that reintroducing car parking charges at this time will have a detrimental impact on small businesses when they open up, and it will also have a public health impact and discourage people from using our country parks for exercise. Committee therefore resolved to continue with the suspension um, and, and review it until it, in until April. So I did actually put a date on April. I'm happy for that. So, um, and that'll okay, hopefully so take into account budget council as well. Yeah, thanks for clarifying so. that. Um, Chris, I know your hand's off, but if, you've, if, if there's nothing to add to your <laughs> shaking your hand, you, uh, we've really got to move on to the vote. So. Do we know what we're actually voting for now? Well, no. I'd be very appreciative if you could then lighten us, because that's the first yeah. vote we're going to take. Okay. So if because you could read out your proposal. Okay, so I, I'm quite happy with what Cher has proposed, and <laughs> saying, <laughs> in that we uh, look at the date as being when this COVID lockdown is over, then we reconsider the car park charges. If, that, if you need a date for the end of this proposal, then that's the one that okay. we should go for. Is that okay? Both, part, both parties have said till the end of this lockdown. Yeah, thank you. Phil, is that okay? Can we go with the? Can we start the vote now? So, chair, what? 
to make, to make this clear, because I, I know Councillor Anderson uh, reiterated what he stated, and as I said at the time, uh, I'm afraid Councillor Anderson's isn't an amendment, it's a, it's a separate proposal that would have to be voted on separately, uh, because in effect it negates what Councillor Kruber is saying, so it's a vote against. Uh, there was a um, uh, an amendment from Councillor Green, but that's not been seconded as yet, otherwise that would have been voted on first. So as it stands, there is just one uh, motion before you to vote on, uh, and that's Councillor Carubius. So that's to reintroduce car parking charges uh, immediately all locations except country parks uh, until the end of the uh, lockdown, at which point it will be reviewed. So, so that's what, what's, what's happened to Tom's then? So, as um, so, Phil, if you could, through me, thank you again. If you could just explain, did you say we needed a seconder? So, no, uh, Chair, as I said when Councillor uh, Anderson first said it, and again just now, uh, as I understand it, Councillor Anderson is stating that the car parking charges are not uh, reintroduced whatsoever uh, until the end of this period. That's diametrically opposed to Councillor Karubia's uh, motion and therefore it negates it so it cannot be an amendment. It is something that would be moved separately if Councillor Karubia's motion is voted against. So, so there is one motion on the table to vote. Uh, if you vote for, then Councillor Karubia's motion is passed and that's the end of the matter. If the vote goes against, the debate continues and then Councillor Anderson can put forward his alternative uh, proposal. Okay, I think, we're, I think we're all clear. Thank you for explaining that. Um, I think, Chair, Chair. Uh, yeah. S sorry, um, I, I, have we completely missed the original proposal, which was Liz Gray's proposal? We don't seem to be voting on that. No, uh, if, if I may, Chair, um, I said at the time, Councillor Gray didn't move this. She, she articulated the recommendations. Uh, it was never accepted by the chair as a motion and there was no seconder. So there has only been one motion so uh, for, I, yeah. for, for so, vote. And that's Councillor so, Karubias. So if could I ask for a proposal of the recommendation? Can yeah. we ask for a proposal of the recommendations now, Phil? Uh, uh, no, if I may, Chair, there is a, a motion on the table to vote upon. So that is Councillor Karubias. If, there, if right, members okay. vote against okay. that, then another motion that's different can then be put forward. Right, OK. So I think we should proceed straight to the vote, if that's all right with everyone. So we're going to be voting on Chris Carubia and Phil Gilchrist's proposal. Thank you, Chair. Uh, members, Thank you. Uh, when, when I um, ask, uh, call your name, if you wouldn't mind stating your vote, please. Uh, Councillor Anderson. Tom Anderson against. Councillor Cameron. Against. Councillor Karubia. For. Councillor Cleary. Pat Cleary against. Councillor Clements. Councillor Clements against. Councillor Gilchrist. For. Thank you. Councillor Green. Um, Councillor, Councillor Green against. Councillor Gray. Councillor Gray against. Councillor Jones. Councillor Jones against. Councillor Leach. Councillor Leach against. Councillor McLaughlin. Councillor McLaughlin against. Councillor Nolan. Councillor Nolan against. Councillor Rennie. Councillor Rennie against. Councillor Robinson. Councillor Robinson against. Councillor Spriggs. Councillor Spriggs, um, first time that I've been um, in the meeting uh, officially and against. Thank you. Councillor Stewart. Councillor Paul Stewart against. And Councillor Williamson. Councillor Williamson against. Thank you. Thank you, members. Uh, so that motion falls uh, and uh, 
Chair, you can now take an alternative uh, proposal. So, and Councillor Anderson uh, has previously indicated. Chair, okay. can I just, oh, Chair, can I, can I make a point of order, please, Chair? I'd like to make a point of order as well, please, Chair. Okay, I'll take them in the order they came to me. Paul Stewart first. Um, can can Phil McCourt just clarify um, what he said about uh, the proposal from Liz Gray? Because it was in the chat box and it's been acknowledged by several members as well. So there was a proposal there. Chair, if there was um, a proposal in the chat box, uh, it wasn't picked up and there hasn't been a seconder. Uh, so it's down to you, Chair, whether you want to accept uh, that proposal first, but obviously you have discussed uh, Councillor Anderson's uh, proposal and his hand is up now. Well, you had a point of order, so I'll bring you in, Tom, now, and then we'll take you forward. Thanks, Chair. I really don't want to prolong this. I mean, the way I've seen it, there's been two um, motions moved. Um, Councillor Karubis, that's just fallen. I previously moved on that was duly seconded. So I would just like advice from the court, shouldn't that be the second, now be voted upon? And if whatever happens, well, if that fails, then another one can come in. Yes, um, Thanks, Tom. Fil film court, I did actually say earlier in the meeting about um, should Liz uh, move her recommendation and look for a seconder, so it was acknowledged. But I think in, in, the, in the way the meeting's gone tonight, with lots of voices all at the same time, but um, it was it, ha it was put in, so I'd like to um, ask her to formally move that and we can seek a seconder on it. Um, yes, Chair, although, although you have just accepted Councillor Anderson uh, speaking, you has also uh, moved it, but the, uh, the order is a matter for you. Um, but uh, as said, uh, it may not have been picked up in the chat box, so my apologies if it's certainly lost uh, in, in my hearing. Uh, but uh, you do have uh, a proposal uh, just submitted by Councillor Anderson. Okay, well, I'm happy to move. I, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to take that now and then go to the third one after this one. Thank you, Chair. So, would you like to read it out, Tom? Because <laughs> I'm sure everyone's. <laughs> Probably needing a bit of a refresh. <laughs> For the third time? Yeah, great. <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, since the circumstances have moved on, since the um, working party considered this, and we're now in our third national lockdown, um, I believe that the reintroducing of car parking charges at the moment would have a detrimental impact on small businesses when they open up, also it'll have a public health impact and discourage those from using our country parks. Therefore, I um, therefore committee resolves to continue with the suspension of council car parking charges to be reviewed in April. Thank you. Phil, would you like to start the roll call? Thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Anderson. Sorry, a four. Councillor Cameron. Four. Councillor Carubia. Against. Councillor Cleary. Pat Cleary against. Councillor Clements. Councillor Clements, four. Councillor Gilchrist. Against, thank you. Councillor Green. Councillor Green, four. Councillor Gray. Councillor Gray against. Councillor Jones. Councillor Jones against. Councillor Leach. Councillor Leach against. Councillor McLaughlin. Councillor McLaughlin against. Councillor Nolan. Councillor Nolan against. Councillor Rennie. Councillor Rennie for. Councillor Robinson. Councillor Robinson against. Councillor Spriggs. Councillor Spriggs against. Councillor Stewart. Councillor Paul Stewart against. And Councillor Williamson. Councillor Williamson against. Good chair, that falls. Thank you. So we now move on to 
the um, proposal put forward by Councillor Liz Gray. Uh, are you formally moving that, Liz? Yes, Chair. Do we have a seconder? I'm happy to second that, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cleary. Can we go to the vote, please, Phil? Thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Anderson. Uh, Chair, not to be awkward, what is the proposal? Uh, yeah, I was just about to say, do you want to just read, read, out, read it out, Liz? Um, it was as, as in the report, um, an option four. So I'll try and find it. So, is it possible that any of the officers can uh, find it? Because I've... Uh, I, can I, can read that I could read that if needed. No, Sorry. That's here and it's... Uh, in, in its long form, uh, Chair, in its short form, it's to reintroduce car parking uh, immediately. Yeah. In its long form, yeah, it is... Short form's fine, Phil. Short form's fine. Then reintroducing car parking charges immediately at all locations. Thank you. Okay, so we've got this. You've moved that. Uh, Pat Blue, we seconded that, so we can go to the vote if that's all right. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Anderson. Tom Anderson, against. Councillor Cameron. Against. <clears throat> Councillor Carubia. Uh, against. Councillor Councillor Cleary. For. Councillor Clements. Against. Councillor Gilchrist. Against, thank you. Councillor Green. Against. Councillor Gray. For. Councillor Jones. Councillor Jones for. Councillor Leach. Councillor Leach for. Councillor McLaughlin. Councillor McLaughlin for. And Nolan. Councillor Nolan for. Councillor Rennie. Councillor Rennie against. Councillor Robinson. Councillor Robinson for. Councillor Spriggs. Councillor Spriggs for. Councillor Stewart. Councillor Paul Stewart for. And Councillor Williamson. Councillor Williamson for. That's carried, Chair. Hello. Councillor Williamson, you're on mute. I was going to say, I thought I'd lost my sound. Councillor Williamson? Sorry. <laughs> I knew it's happened. Bound to. Um, I'll start again. Thank you, everyone. And the camera wasn't on either. So, OK, thank you, everyone. So that concludes agenda item seven. We're going on to item eight now, which is Smart Business Full Business Case, pages 39 to 46 in your uh, agenda, in your report pack. So this report is an open one to be discussed in public by members. However, the appendix, which is the full business case, is exempt. And if any members wish to discuss specific details in the appendix, then we will need to move the exemption. And as such, I would recommend discussing those details at the end of the meeting after item 10. So if we're OK to proceed, I'm going to invite Cher Halewood to present the report. Um, just bear with me while I switch screens. I don't see any hands up. So yes, Cher, would you like to come in to speak to it? Thank you. Um, actually, as I've just said, that a hand has gone up. So just bear with me if I can find out where it is. OK, so we've got Councillor Green and Councillor Leach both with their hands up. Thank you. Jeff, you're first. Sorry. Chair, I, I don't want to extend this for um, 
for everybody. But you'll remember that you asked a small working party to get together to look at the business case, um, which we subsequently did. I'm sure other colleagues can speak to that. that we're on the <coughs> working party, but we did go through it in some detail on the committee's behalf, and we were uh, supportive of it. Uh, views were expressed about whether um, cashable savings should be identified or otherwise. But uh, so we have we have done that on your behalf, and we did go through it in a lot of detail, uh, almost line by line. And yeah, we were supportive of what was being proposed. So just and I do apologise. It slightly remitted me there. I should have thanked the working group for all the work that you've done on this. It was certainly an area that I couldn't have even anticipated because I knew nothing about IT. So I do, and I'm appreciative, as I'm sure all of the committee is, Jeff, of that. So thank you. And, um, you know, we'd like you to speak to it. And um, we're going to, if it's all right with everyone, we're going to bring sharing. And then obviously we know people up to comments and questions after that. So thanks for bringing that up, Jeff. Thank you, Chair. Um, so I'm just going to uh, briefly introduce this really. So Smart Business is uh, the project that is concerned with um, upgrading the Council's critical business systems. These are, in the main, they are the finance, the procurement, the HR and the payroll system. Uh, the current system that the Council operates, Oracle, has been in place since 2005 and has not actually been upgraded since 2011. So the business case actually is a result of quite an extensive um, piece of work that has been undertaken over the past two years um, internally to get to this process. Um, as Councillor Green has just mentioned, a task and finish group was established uh, last year to review the business case um, that was formed of Councillor Green, um, Councillor Stewart and Councillor Karubia as well. Um, and uh, as a result of uh, the business case coming forward to the task and finish group in advance of the, uh, the report coming through to the policy and resources committee tonight. And one of the recommendations in this report is actually to appoint um, a new members working group to monitor the project performance. Um, so this business case is, uh, or the report is actually only concerned with um, awarding the tender uh, to the uh, preferred supplier. Uh, which, as you said, is part of the exempt appendix. So there are four recommendations in the report. Um, the first one is to actually approve the implementation of the upgrade of the current solution, approve the budget for the solution of 4.6 million, um, approve the contract, the five-year contract to the supplier named within the business case, and also, as I just mentioned, to approve um, the members' working group. Um, I'll just pause there, Chair. We'll come in later on, if necessary, to provide some more details um, when you talk about the exempt appendix. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I'm going to invite members now to come in with any questions or comments on this. Um, don't actually see any hands up. So I'm going to take the unusual step of inviting Jeff. Ah, you've just put your hand up anyway. Well, um, yeah, Jeff, would you like to come in and talk to some of the work that the, oh, the work oh, that the your group did? Yeah, I'm sure Chris and Paul will uh, will will speak. But we did, as if you recall, we looked at it. It's a massive business case, and I think your, your suggestion was a group of us should go away and look at it in some detail, go through it, which we did with you know, the relevant officers concerned and the people involved with the project. Um, you know, I th and I think the points that we made the, uh, were good ones, obviously, everyone, and they were taken on board. There's no question that if we don't do something, our finance systems will fall over. So it is essential that this particular aspect, um, it is an it is an ERP insofar as it can deal with these other elements that shares referred to, but this first part of the project, from what I can tell, is primarily around replacing clapped out finance systems. Um, my one issue remains um, that again we talked about in the working group is cashable savings for such an investment. I think we would normally expect to see cashable savings. Um, but I'm sure that's been taken on board by Cher and others, and we will see reports coming forward with regards to those savings. I think the suggestion about member involvement is quite good insofar as, um, you know, projects can fall back, they can slip, they can start asking for more money. And I think members' involvement with that will help. 
and also be advocates for the project because as people point out you hear it projects and people's eyes can uh, glaze over but they can end up costing a fortune if you get them wrong so that's uh, that was my my bit but i'm fully supportive of these recommendations that are about other colleagues on the working group chair thanks jeff i'm going to bring in another member of the working group chris carubia thanks thanks chair yeah i, I uh, totally agree with what uh, jeff's just been saying and it, it is a, a mammoth task this my only one of my concerns was that we we came in a bit late to the party really this has been being looked at for a number of years i think by uh, officers uh, and especially in things like uh, procurement uh, and this kind of thing i would have preferred to be involved at an earlier stage that having been said uh, uh, you know that it's a com comprehensive piece of work and it's going to take quite a lot of uh, a lot of time to implement and it is an arp system uh, and this is only the first stage of what should be uh, a considerable project really thank you yes. Um, Paul, you've got your hand up and you were the third member on that group, so thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the comments that uh, colleagues on that group um, have, have already said I agree with, um, and I'd be happy to, to move the recommendations in the report, Chair. I'll second them. There you go, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Preempt is what I was going to say. Thank you. So we've got a mover and a seconder. Can I take it by assent that we have agreements here to approve these recommendations? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Agreed. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. That was certainly easier than the preceding item anyway. Um, so we don't need to do a roll call on that. So we're going and on to our... So thank you again for everyone who involved in that piece of work. And thank you to all the... the, um, the working group on the previous item too um, thank you so much section b is our budget and performance management so share you're going to present the report Gov government spending review and the impact on Wales budget for 2021-22 and that's pages 47 to 54 so share would you like to speak to this please thank you chair um, yes, so the report is a report to note and it just provides information on the outcome of the um, the spending review. So the paper highlights the outcome of the national spending review that was announced at the end of last year. Um, and it also indicates the impact on uh, Wirral as a result of the draft funding settlement that has been received um, already. The final settlement will not, not actually be known until uh, hope potentially the end of this month or next month. So the figures that you've got in the report just need to emphasise our draft and still may be subject to change as well. Uh, the consultation on the settlement uh, closed on the 16th of January. So obviously the uh, government will be taking into account all the responses from the consultation before it actually makes its final uh, submission and we receive the final funding settlement. Um, just in terms, I mean, I'm not going to go through the report in, in a lot of detail, uh, but just in terms of the national spending review, I mean, the, the main points to note in the report uh, are in paragraphs uh, 3.4 to 3.15, which highlight the uh, main areas that were announced last year, as I say, as part of the individual elements of the national spending review. Uh, for the council, the impact of uh, for Wirral is shown in table one. Um, there are a few changes I just wanted to highlight to members there. So uh, there's a small reduction first off in the government top up grant that we've assumed. Um, it's 160,000 uh, that we uh, thought we would get more. Uh, we've actually got less uh, in, in respect of that. There's an additional uh, 4.4 million from utilising the flexibilities um, for council tax. Uh, and the government have allowed us, as, you, as you're aware, to a, a levy an additional 3% on, uh, on council tax to offset specifically adult social care pressures. And this is included within the budget consultation report that was uh, published in December. Um, a reduction in the a reduction of 3 million is cited in the report as a result of the, uh, the, the shortfall on the collection fund. So um, we had predicted for 21-22 that there would be a £4 million shortfall in terms of collection uh, rates for council tax on business rates. Uh, the information that we've had from the government is that they would fund 75% of that shortfall. 
Uh, we are working through the guidance on that at the moment because it is it is quite complicated, um, to be honest, and it takes into account um, uh, all the elements in the collection fund, including things like um, the uh, appeals uh, and, uh, and and lots of uh, bad debt provision as well. So um, we are not we, at the moment. We have assumed that um, the government are assuming, as I say, seventy five percent compensation for that, which is three million. Um, but we are working through this and hopefully we will we'll have more guidance as a result of the final funding settlement that we'll receive at the end of this month or next month. So that figure is actually uh, potentially subject to change um, as a result of that. Um, the, if that stays as it is, uh, that three million additional funding has been used to um, relieve the pressure. Uh, uh, from council tax collection as a result of our capitalisation directive. So this pressure actually forms part of the capitalisation directive that we supplied for, for M from MHCLG. So this three million will actually reduce the value of that capitalisation directive as it's a direct result of COVID pressures. Uh, the next item is a small increase on the new homes bonus, a positive increase from what we were expecting of 80,000. Um, there is an increase in the social care grant as well of 3.34 million and I just wanted to um, alert members to a further paragraph in the report which is paragraph 3.20. Um, there are actually sites in paragraph 3.20 that the social care grant is, is written down there as um, 2.4 million. This is incorrect. So the actual additional value of social care grant is 3.3 million, 3.34 million as shown in the table. Uh, what's happened there, Chair, is that when we did some initial allocations of what we thought we might get for the social care grant, it came out as 2.4. And then actually when we have received the final allocations, we, we do know it's 3.4 million and that's not been changed in the uh, paragraph 3.20. So just for noting in the minutes, that is incorrect and it is 3.34 million. Um, at the moment, this, this figure of 3.34 million is actually being earmarked for um, additional pressures on children and adult social care um, next year in 2021-22. Um, and finally, a new grant in the table, the last element, which is uh, just over half a million, which is called the Lower Tier Services Grant. Um, and this, is, this has been provided by the government to use for what they call um, offset direct uh, district council services. And we are fully allocating this grant to the additional costs of waste disposal, which is um, uh, just over a million pound for uh, next year. And this is as a result of traffic management facilities, as a result of COVID on household uh, waste recycling sites as well. I just draw you to the other uh, paragraphs of other funding in the report as well for 21-22. Um, we have been notified that we have got an additional tranche five of COVID emergency funding, which is specifically for next year and does come into effect in 21-22. And this is uh, just over £10 million. Um, and this will go as well to reduce our capitalisation directive. So this is to offset uh, COVID pressures that we have next year. And as you're aware, as all the committee are aware, our capitalisation directive is made up of COVID pressures. So MHCLG have an expectation that we will obviously reduce our COVID pressures by the value of funding that we've received from tranche five, which is, uh, as I say, just over that 10 million. And then uh, just a couple of other note and items to note in the additional uh, other funding. The local council tax support grant has been extended into 21-22. Uh, we've received an indicative allocation of that of 3.94 million. And this will be reused directly to support vulnerable households, uh, people who are claiming council tax uh, support scheme. And that will help with offsetting their council tax bills for 21-22. And then finally, just to note, Chair, there that there is an increase of 0.7% in the public health grant, which um, generally is around about, we've estimated around about £200,000. And this will go, obviously, to offset uh, inflation on public health contracts going into 21-22. So the recommendation here, Chair, as I mentioned at the start, is just to note uh, the impact of the items as a result of the uh, national spending review. And I will bring back... Um, the outcome, the final outcome of the final spending review in the report that comes to Policy and Resources Committee next month in February. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair.
I don't see any hands up, so are members happy to note um, the recommendations there? Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, okay, thank Agreed. you very much. Right then, we'll just move on to section C, which is work programme overview and scrutiny. It's a work programme update, pages 55 to 64. So, Phil McCourt, would you like to um, come in, please? Uh, very short, Chair. Uh, the uh, forward plan of items for the committee are there on the appendix uh, as you discussed uh, amongst yourselves as group leaders uh, the intention is to strip back uh, agendas so far as is possible to, for those three uh, priorities during this period uh, so we've had no uh, further requests for additional items simply for noting chair thank you are members happy to note do we agree to note this? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Agreed. Um, so, Phil, I don't think we have any exempt items, do we? Uh, uh, no, you have uh, an exempt appendix to uh, the item chair, which in, uh, involved uh, business information. Uh, and just as a matter of belt and braces, whilst you didn't uh, discuss it tonight, we have mm. had some people write in and say, but does that therefore mean uh, that they can have a copy? So whilst in the past we've assumed that that's OK on the papers, uh, can I request belt and braces for the public uh, that you simply uh, propose second uh, and agree this? So I'm happy to propose this. Have I got a seconder? Yeah, I'm, I'll, well, what are we proposing and seconding? Just as a, that it's, that it should be, um, exempt or are we proposing and accepting that we and secondly that we agree the uh, business case because happy to agree the business case but I, I i did wonder why it is uh, exempt and could we take the exempt bits out and allow the public to see what it is we're doing or why we're doing it nothing to be ashamed of in there actually i think it's a good report uh chair the the report itself uh, is in public it's simply the appendix with the uh, yeah. additional uh, commercial information on in terms of the bidders yeah uh, and that's that's what that's what i'm saying chair that yeah. um you know yeah. business case is good but if we could take the if we can take the commercial bits out then it should be available to the public on this you would have thought and i think that's what we're proposing isn't it phil uh yes chair there's a there's a rather semi-blunt instrument used at the moment so the report is in public and the appendix uh, is due to be uh, made exempt uh, i think what councillor green suggesting is that we go through a process uh, of redacting that uh, further so that more information could be put out yeah i think all i'm suggesting chair and which i think you're kind of agreeing to is that that if somebody is prepared to read the business case good on them but uh, and they should be allowed to, as long as we take the commercial bits out. Do you see what I mean? That's all I'm saying. So they can see the report and the business case, but without the commercial bits in the business case. Um, and as compared to this, the current appendix, which is exempt, is that right, Phil? Would the, yes, as it stands, right? Chair, yeah. the entire appendix mm. uh, is is exempt. Um, because it was felt that it would be difficult uh, to go through that process. Um, however, if you wish to uh, move to make that exempt, uh, but for officers to uh, go away, uh, re-evaluate again against the public interest test and then publish... Oh, sorry, so uh, you've clarified, no, actually, I'm not prepared to propose that. I think it should remain as it is. So obviously, Jeff's got a difference of opinion on that one. So maybe other members could speak. Uh, if, if I may, Chair, yes. I think, um, thank you. I think um, what Jeff's um, suggesting is if there's anything in the in the appendix that people would be interested in that isn't sensitive. And, I, and I, as I understand it, the appendix is the sensitive information, so it should stand. I think officers have enough to do as it is. Thanks. I agree completely. Yeah. So we've got. Um, I think we need. We could we proceed to a vote on this then, Phil? Uh, 
Uh, yes, Chair. So uh, you have, uh, I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, moved and has somebody seconded uh, to make this exempt. Uh, I think Councillor Green would then be moving uh, an amendment to vote upon that it's not yes, exempt yes. as a whole, uh, but that it should be uh, referred back to officers to uh, yeah. reconsider. Well, I have a seconder then, please, uh, to my, my I, I don't proposal. Know if Councillor Green wants to, um, wants to elucidate further. Yeah. No, I, I think, I, I, Jeff, I think you seconded my proposal originally, but I don't yeah. think you've got it now, are you? No. I, you're right there. I, I mean, I. So, if your proposal is that it should be the entire business case should remain secret, um, I wasn't, wouldn't have supported that. I would have thought. Exempt. Exempt. Not language. Exempt. Okay. Uh, my view is given what we started with the question at the very beginning, didn't we? So, my uh, my amendment would be that the the reason it's exempt is because of the commercial items. We take the commercial items out and it's only in one element of the business case. Bear in mind, I have read it, as have the other members of the working party. So we take that commercial bit out, which is very small within the uh, within the business case, and that we then, then we make the rest of the business case available. Okay, so we've got... I, um... I propose that we we say the, the um, report as exempt, uh, the appendix as exempt. Chris, you supported that. Are you happy to second? Yes, I'm happy to second that. Thank you. So, Jeff, you, you you've put forward an amendment. Do you have a seconder? I certainly hope so. <laughs> yeah, I'll second that. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Leslie. So, can we? I don't see anyone else that wishes to actually speak to this. Can we just proceed to a vote? Uh, Yes, Chair. Uh, with, Thank you. With one, with, with one request, yeah. uh, Mr. Green, that that's written up in a way um, that officers are authorised uh, to go through this and remove what we consider to be commercial information. Consider it so written up, Bill. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, in, in that case, Chair, uh, you are voting on Councillor uh, Green's amendment. Um, first. Oh, yeah. I'll just bring Phil Gilchrist in, Phil, yes. he's just got yeah. his hand up, and then Second we will go to, to the vote. Yeah. Um, I did read it, and I'm not a computer person, but it strikes me that not only there are figures about the costs of the projects at the end, but there could be, when we go to moving for further stages of the project, which aren't in this first phase, that the information that's in there may be of interest to competitors, and I'm troubled by that. Yeah, thanks, Phil. As I say, I agree. Um, so, should we move to the vote then? Thanks, Phil, of course. Thank you, Chair. Uh, so, you're voting on uh, Councillor Green's amendment. Uh, Councillor Anderson? For. Councillor Cameron? For. Councillor Carubia? Uh, against. Cleary? Councillor Cleary against. Councillor Clements? Four. Councillor Gilchrist. Against, thank you. Councillor Green. Four. Councillor Gray. Councillor Gray. Councillor Gray with us, Chair. Making a coffee. I'll move on, Chair. Councillor Jones. Against. Councillor Leach. Councillor Leach against. McLaughlin. Councillor McLaughlin against. Councillor Nolan. More coffee. Councillor Actually, Nolan. no, it's not. It's coffee. Coffee. I'm trying to get off of you. Councillor Nolan against. Thank you. Councillor Rennie. Councillor Rennie for. Councillor Robinson. Against. Councillor Spriggs. Cutting out a bit there, Phil, but against. Thank you. Stuart. 
And I assume you said Councillor Stewart then? For, I did, yes. Uh, oh. Okay, you were cutting out. Yeah, uh, Councillor Stewart, oh. um, against. I'll turn my camera off. Uh, and Councillor Williamson. What? Councillor Williamson again. Again. Sorry, I, I was ejected from the meeting, so I've been coming halfway through. Um, can you tell me what I'm voting on? Well, I apologise. Jesus isn't here to help us, Phil is. Yeah, so. Be fine if you just say against. The yeah. vote is on the Conservative amendment to the um, exemption. Okay, against. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Apologies, Chair. Dr. William. It sounds as though I was popping in and out there as well. Chair, I didn't get a chance to vote. Is it too late for me to vote? No, certainly mm. isn't. Uh, it, it depends, Councillor Gray. Did, did you hear the debate or... i could hear i just couldn't get my unmute off uh, my in, mute. in which case councillor uh, gray please vote uh against thank you that that full yes. chair um so it's uh, back to the main motion which is happy for that to go through rather than put by acclamation the committee's view is clear thank you councillor green thank you chair. chair thank you that brings us to uh, the end of the meeting. Thank you all for your attendance and participation. Uh, and I wish you have a, a pleasant evening. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. 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 Thank